Today we are going to be designing our own Air Force Ones using this template image that you can find out in Google Classroom. For the purposes of this demonstration, I do have this shoe open and then a couple of textures. I have these textures out on Classroom if you want to follow along with me, or you can just wait, watch the video, and then go back and find your own textures for to be able to complete this assignment. And so what you are going to be doing is designing your own Air Force Ones. And this right here, this is the just an example from last semester. So I'll just briefly go through this example. These are some examples of things that you may create on your own at the end of the assignment. And I'll fully explain the assignment again at the very end of this video. But just to give you an idea of what we are going to be doing today. We are going to be using images and textures the gradient tool, the fill tool, all to design a cohesive Air Force One um, that really shows off your personality and something maybe like you would love to be rocking someday. Okay, so you're going to be wanting to look at matching colors, making sure those all look alike, and then also looking for textures that will look nice and um, will look good when you go to show it to your classmates. Okay. So, coming back to this image, let's get started. What you're going to want to do is have open this Air Force One image plus whatever textures or images that you're going to be wanting to incorporate within your shoe. Okay, we are going to be using the magic wand tool, the invert tool, the fill tool, uh, among others, but those are some of the newer ones that we might be using today that you haven't seen before. So I'm going to go and I want to fill in, I want to start with my swoosh. So I'm going to come over here to my watercolor image. I'm going to get my move tool if it's not already selected. Remember my keyboard shortcut is V. I'm just going to click in the middle of my image. Click, drag up. So on my mouse, I still have my mouse selected. I have not let up on my mouse. Drag it up to the tab of the Air Force One drag it down, and then when I see this white box around here, uh, around my main screen, then I will release my mouse. So let me just show that one more time. Click and hold on your mouse in the center of this image with your move tool selected. Go up to the tab, down, and release. Okay? Now I'm going to take a second and briefly name my layer. So this layer is going to be called the watercolor layer. I'm just going to put watercolor. And then right now your background image is locked. And this just means like if I wanted to drag this below, I can't do anything with it. Um, it just prevents me from removing the background, this layer for some reason. We're actually gonna unlock it. So if you double click on the lock, that is going to rename it um, to layer zero. If you had a window pop up, just close out of that. I'm going to double click on layer zero and I'm going to call this shoe just so I know always what layer that is. It's really good to get in the habit of renaming your layers so that you know exactly what, where you are at, okay? So I'm gonna come back to this watercolor layer. I still have my move tool selected. I'm actually going to control T and I'm going to expand. So remember, I'm wanting to fill this into the swish. So I'm gonna expand so this fits over the swish and push enter when I'm good to go. If I do not push enter after using control T, it's not going to let me do anything else. And in fact, it'll come up with this dialog box. Are you sure? Do you want to apply the transformation? Something like that. If you go to try to do anything else with the transform tool st still selected, that's why as soon as you're done using it, just push enter and you should be good to go. Okay. So I'm going to cover that up and I'm going to take the time and drag my watercolor layer below the shoe. Okay, so it's hidden right now because of my layers, but I want to delete this portion of the swish to show through that watercolor layer. So I am going to be using my magic wand tool, making sure that's the tool selected. It's the W on the keyboard. If I were to go and try to select, use my magic wand tool to select um, the swish right now, if you notice what it's picking up, it's picking up the watercolor layer and the pixels that relate to that watercolor layer. That's not what we're wanting here, okay? We need to be on the shoe layer, then click in the swish, 
Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the delete key. So you'll see that's showing that layer through. But as we go to add more, we've got some excess to do, delete and deal with. So hide the shoe layer by clicking the eye. You can see that my selection of the swoosh is still showing. I want to delete everything outside of what's being selected right now. So I want to delete everything outside of what's being selected right now. And to do that, I need to use the Invert Selection tool. So make sure that you click on your watercolor layer for me, okay? Then hit Control Shift I. When I do that, you may say, "Miss Payne, nothing happened." Well, if you see the dancing or the marching ants on the outside here, that means it's um, selected the excess, whatever's outside of the swish. Once I've done that, and again, make sure that you have the watercolor layer selected. I'm going to push Delete. And now when I go to show the shoe, I have the exact part of the swish that I want. Okay. I'm going to show this again, but with another different um, texture. So on my wood grain layer, I get my move tool. I push V, click and hold, drag up to the tab, drag down. Okay. I'm going to drag this on top for a second, rename this wood grain. Control T, and I'm going to stretch this to fit. I'm um, putting it, I'm going to be going for this part of the shoe right here. Okay, so I'm going to stretch that to fit. I'll push Enter. I am going to drag it to the very bottom. Click on my shoe layer. Click W to get my wand tool, and select this part of the shoe. Push Delete. I'm doing this all on the shoe layer. Make sure I'm on the shoe layer. Push delete. That's going to show that through, but I want to get rid of the excess. So I'm going to hide the shoe layer, select my new texture, my wood grain image, invert selection, control, shift, I, to select everything but what I had selected, and push delete. Now I have a selection that is the shape, exact shape that I need it to be for the shoe. Control D to deselect. Okay. So that is how you are going to put in textures or images. Please rewind this so that you can see it again and again and again. Use it as many times as you want. Let me explain the rest of the assignment. Okay, so you are going to be creating, again, a cohesive design for your Air Force One. All right, I'm going to be asking you to use colors, use textures, use gradients. Um, you're going to be needing to put in a background behind the shoe and you need to name your shoe. Give it a name of some sort. Okay. Um, so coming back in here, let's recap a couple of ways that you can put in gradients or fill in your shoe. Okay. So if I'm on my shoe layer and let's say I just want to color this part of my shoe. Okay. I get my magic wand tool select. I add to my selection by pressing and holding shift and clicking to add to my selection. I want to make sure that my shoe matches. Now I know the watercolor with the wood grain, like I just found a couple of random textures, those don't really match, but let's say I want to fill this back part of the shoe with a blue that you can, might be able to find in here. With those selections, I can get my eyedropper tool, click on the watercolor layer, and click to find a blue. Okay, so let's see. There, something like that. Go back to my shoe layer. I don't have to delete anything. You can if you wanted to. I am going to create a new layer and I'm going to shift F5. And what that does is that brings up the fill tool and I want to fill it with the foreground color, whatever color is on top here, and say OK. All right, so now I have this back part filled. Maybe next I might control D to deselect again. Maybe I want to get my watercolor layer and I want to do something like the blue to one of these other colors. So I might select my other swatch, get my eyedropper tool and oh, like this blue to brown and then go and get my gradient tool and use the gradient of foreground to background. 
click on the shoe layer, get my wand, select this part of the shoe. New layer, go back to my gradient, and see what maybe I can make. Okay, maybe I want to go this way because I have the blue over here. Maybe I want to mix them this way. I don't know. You guys can decide. So those are a couple of different options. Fill tool, Shift F5. My gradient tool is just the G, and it's this tool right here. You need to, again, create a cohesive design. This is not a very pretty shoe at all. Um, create a cohesive design. All the elements need to be colored in some way, shape, or form. That includes the shoelaces, unless you're wanting white shoelaces. You need to have a background in here. So again, let's say that I pick, I don't know, let's pick this random rainbowish gradient. Going on my shoe layer, get my wand, go back to my gradient, new layer. Okay, I can add in one of these gradients in the background. Control D to deselect. Get my text tool, type ugly shoe, because it is ugly, um, and put it somewhere in there for a title. This is what you'll submit on Classroom. You want to save it as a PSD and JPEG to turn in on Classroom and then upload to the Google Slides the JPEG version of your shoe. Uh, you also need to type in here somewhere your name so that we know who the shoe belongs to. Okay? And you don't have to make that as prominent. You can put that somewhere else. A couple of reminders. Again, if you're on your wand and let's say on this layer and I'm trying to select this part of the shoe and it's selecting the whole shoe. You need to remember it's selecting the pixels it can see on the layer you have selected. So that's everything. You can see those transparent pixels over there. You need to make sure you're on the shoe layer, then get your wand tool um, to select one part of the shoe. Okay. Again, if you have any questions, rewind this video, ask me, anything like that. But really, I want to see what you can come up with, and I'm excited to see your creative designs.